Hello, welcome to our ninth tutorial. This one will be on solving equations. There are a lot of small sections within this tutorial. In some cases, it's different commands because you may want to see your answers in different forms, but we'll also look at how to check solutions and then also how to solve systems of equations. All right, so let's go back up to the beginning. Solve, here's my equation, double equal sign, and I'm solving for x. And I get two solutions as I would expect to see. I have arrows and curly braces. We will come back to that later for reasons for that. But right now we do get the two solutions we'd expect to see. Come down here, slight variation. I get complex numbers. Wolfram language will by default give you complex numbers as necessary. This one's a little bit different because I have trig in here, but I'm still solving for x. Okay, conditional expression, we'll ignore that for a moment. But minus pi over six plus two pi times c1, where c1 is an integer. And then I get my other possibilities in here too. This is really nice to give you all those solutions, um, but with the periodicity showing up with the constants. All right didn't used to do that. A uh, different example, I have an equation written implicitly here. If I solve for x, I can get solutions for x in terms of y. Similarly, I could go back and solve for y in terms of x. Next, literal equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. And so when I solve that for x, I get my two variations from the quadratic formula. On the other hand, I could instead use the command reduce with the same syntax exactly, and my answer will come out looking very different. Reduce looks for different cases. Please remember first that the double ampersand is and, and the double vertical bar is or. So if a does not equal zero, then I will get my two quadratic formula solutions. Or I have the case where A equals zero, but B does not equal zero, then I'm down to a linear equation and I get my solution. Or I have the case where A and B and C are all equal to zero. So sometimes reduce is very nice to let you see other cases that you might not have thought about, but sometimes you're back looking at your quadratic and you know a doesn't equal zero and you just want a simpler form. So there are choices there. Next, solving. This is a cubic, it's not a friendly one. Okay, so I get this interesting little notation there and these kind of rectangles and beginnings of um, numerical values even though I told it to find an exact solution. If I hover over this, it's getting me into some pure function notation. Not the most helpful in this case. Instead, n solve for my numerical solutions. Same equation in this case, and I get the same forms of answers I would have gotten before. And another example here, I have fourth degree, but I also have a square root of x in here. I get complex solutions and numerical values. Generally, solve and n solve work on algebraic equations. But down here, n solve, I have x and cosine of x, so that is not algebraic. And when I try to do that, the Wolfram language politely tells me that it's not going to give me an answer, and it just spits out my command again. Thanks. But this brings us down to a different method. So here I have a command find root that will work in this case. Find root is a variation of Newton's method, and that means that it needs an initial guess to get it started. So first what we do here is to come back up and plot my two functions, x and cosine of x, and I can see that I have a solution reasonably close to one. So I come down to my command, find root, x equals cosine of x, and then in curly braces, x comma one, that's my initial guess. And when I do that, in fact, I will very nicely get a good decimal approximation. All right, another example down here, a not so friendly cubic, but then I also have um, 
x and trig stuff in here in my g of x. So let's input the functions, come down and plot the functions so I can see where they intersect. Yes, I knew that domain worked fairly well before I put it in here. Um, and my cubic's gonna go off to negative infinity and then positive infinity, so that won't cause any more problems here. Now, so I have a solution down here close to negative five. And so find root f of x equals g of x and um, starting guess of negative five. Okay, and I will get a solution. Now, I want to find the other two. I have solution somewhere up here close to negative one and a half. I'll do that. A right, couple ways to do it. I can come up here to insert and input from above and just edit that value if I want to negative 1.5 and get that. And so I can do that again and look for my third solution. So I'll have all three of them in front of me. I could also take one of these and I'll just put one in over here to get my third root out. Okay, you don't have to be super close to the point of intersection, but I don't want to be too far away either. If my function, especially this one with the trig in it, is going up and down, I might be wanting to find this root and start too far away, and I'd find that one again instead. So you want to be somewhat careful with this, but it generally works pretty well. All right, um, clearing F and G. Good. Checking solutions. All right, in this case, I choose, chose a really nice function, and I can do this exactly. I have to solve here, and I'm going to name my um, solution set here as just solutions, and I get four solutions out of that. And I come down here, and I'm going to use f of x slash dot solutions because that's my set of four solutions. And when I do that, yep, I get zeros out of that. If you recall, we saw this notation a long time ago, but that's for evaluating functions, or one way to do it. If I wanted to substitute a in for x, for example, I'd put x arrow a. Just take my x's and replace them by a's. Well, that's why the Wolfram language is using this notation, because x is replaced by negative 23, then by negative 5, etc. And each time I got zero out. But that's the reason for the arrows and the curly braces. All right, clear stuff. Next, systems of equations. All right, a um, couple different sorts of things here. I have a linear equation, and then I have a quadratic that is implicitly given. So I'm going to name my first one when I plot it as gr1, and then I'm going to. Um, use contour plot for my implicitly defined equation. And then I'm going to use the show command to put both of them together. And in fact, here I come out with a parabola and a straight line. All right now, to solve this, the first thing I'm solving is just my system of equations, just a comma in between. And then I'm solving for both x and y, so those go into curly braces. And I get my two ordered pairs. There's one in the first set of order, curly braces, and there's my second one. All right, exercise time. All right, first one, pretty direct here. And solve, um, just to solve this equation, I'm not even going to clear it because I'm not going to define it cheap, but that's okay. And solve, and then I want x to the fourth and minus 6x cubed, so minus 6x cubed and plus 3x plus 8. Okay, 3x plus 8, and solving that equals... 0, solve for x, close that off, and we're good. Okay, complex solutions there. All right, next, um, several things I'm putting together in here. I want to define my functions in this case. So let's let f of x underscore 
um, and colon equals, you got to get used to using that notation. And x to the fourth minus 6x squared, 6x, oops, squared, plus 2x plus 5, plus 2x plus 5. And then I'll just suppress that and then put g of x in here, x underscore rack, good, oops, sorry, um, colon equals. And we have x cubed minus 3x plus 1, minus 3x plus 1. All right, input both of those. Got that. Now plotting both of them together, so plot and curly braces because I want to plot both functions. And g of x, close curly braces. And oh, let's see, let me just try minus 5 to 5 first and see what happens there. And close that off. Oops, sorry, x. <laughs> Okay, I can go in a little bit. That's a bit hard to see. So I'm going to go from minus 3 to 3. That'll be fine. So minus 3 up to 3. Sorry. Okay, I get a much better view of what's going on in there. I do, in fact, have four points of intersection in this case. All right. So I found an appropriate domain, good enough. I don't think I'm gonna have any other trouble in here. Um, my graphs are already colored. I'm not going to add any options, but you can if you want, you can add a plot style in here. Okay, some intersections with n solves. So if I do that, and I have f of x equals g of x and solving for x, and I get nice solutions in this case. That seems good. And well, this is another slightly different example because I have my x values, but what if I want to find the y values? Well, let me just take down here f of x, and I can use my slash dot, uh-oh, I'm going to come back up. How about my solutions? So I'm going to name that. All right, now I want f of x and slash dot my solutions. And when I put that in, I will get my corresponding y values out. So the last time I did that, it wasn't quite as exciting because I was getting zero out every time. But this becomes a lot more helpful. And I'm just pairing up those values together. All right, so that's a lot of information on solving. Many different options to use in there with the commands that you choose and what form you want solutions in. But still, basically solve and solve and find root will take you quite a ways. Thank you.